Hi, this is Ed Butowski, and I'm here with my good friend, Trey Knippa. And uh, you can see that Trey is wearing one of those jackets that you see on the Chicago Merc because that's what he does. He trades down there. Um, so what I want to talk about today with you, Trey, is you have started a fun, separately managed account called ShortJapanDebt.com. And we've met and uh, we're about to partner up uh, with this uh, particular investment. And it takes a lot to impress me, Trey. You impress the hell out of me. And I want to really kind of do this as an interview where I talk to you about why you started this trade, what is going on in Japan, how can people make money doing this particular investment, and how much they can potentially make. So let's just start off, Trey. Give us a little bit of your background first. <laughs> You bet. And first of all, I have to apologize because I am on the floor of the exchange right now. We're going to hear some background noise. The S&P pit is still open. So that's what you hear in the background is all the guys in the funny color jackets yelling and screaming at each other, doing the funny, uh, all the funny hand signals. Great. But no this, this idea was actually born down here for me because one day I'm down in the pit. I'm doing my thing. I'm trading options and cattle and that sort of thing. And I look up and I see an interview with Kyle Bass. Now, I originally started my career at Prudential Securities. Kyle was in the Fort Worth office. I was in the Dallas office. I had met him a couple of times. So I recognized him on the, we've got big TVs down here like Diamond Visions at a baseball game. Right. I saw him. I said, hey, I recognize that guy. So I went and I listened to the interview and he laid out the basic case of why he thought that Japan had a very serious possibility of a default on their bonds. And, and, and then he said the magic words. And then he said, and you can place enormous bets against the Japanese government bond market for nearly nothing. I'm like, great, I'm in. So I called his fund. The minimum was really, really high. So I set out to, number one, try to convince myself by doing my own homework of why I thought this was going to happen. And then by the same token, how do I manage to get myself this exposure? And then once I came up with a strategy, uh, to be perfectly honest, I met with a bond fund manager, a friend of mine here in Chicago. And he said, Trey, you're a com once I showed him my strategy and what I was doing, he said, Trey, you're a complete idiot. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, if you go online, there are entire chat rooms designated to people talking about how do I put this trade on? It seems so obvious. What are the ways to do it? He goes, I think you have come up with a, a reasonable solution here. Why don't you wrap this in some sort of a product where individual investors can, can put money in this and you manage it? So that's, what, that's, that's exactly what happened. And that's kind of the history of my CTA. That's fantastic. Tell me, what is the... Give us the economics as to why Japan is going to, basically, the debt is going to implode and Japan can't get out of this. And, and let's start off with that 250% number related to Japan and 160% of the GDP with Greece. Touch on that. Sure. Uh, one way that you can compare one country to the next is you say, what is the size of the total government debt and what is the size of their economy? And that ratio is called the debt to GDP ratio. How big is the debt? How big is GDP? At what Greece restructured two summers ago. Greece had a default. Their GDP, debt to GDP topped out at 160%. Japan's is at 250%. Now, why did this happen? This, is, this story is going to sound vaguely familiar, so bear with me here. Japan had a real estate bubble that popped in 1992. So now all those loans that are now underwater, all that real estate that's underwater, the government didn't want those banks to go under, to go under and they didn't want all those repossessions. So the government stepped in. Suddenly the Japan, Japanese economy just implodes. Commercial real estate drops 85% off its highs. The Nikkei drops 75% off its highs. The bubble pop. Simple as that. So rather than the banks going under and taking those losses, here comes the government to save the day, right? Where have we heard that story before? That's right. They do some TART kind of activities. The next thing, the Bank of Japan backs them up by lowering interest rates to zero. Then by lowering interest rates to zero, that doesn't spark economic growth. So then they step in and they do a whole series of quantitative easing measures. Once again, this sounding familiar. They're buying their own debt. The de very definition of that is monetization of the debt. The reason is there's not enough people to buy their own bonds, so they have to buy them themselves. They clearly are, are inflating and they're weakening the currency by doing that. But the Bank of Japan is the buyer of last resort for this stuff. So after all that spending and all that debt, th this was debt-fueled spending right. Okay, since 1992. So we've had 21 years of debt-fueled spending to, for it to work. And what has that got in Japan? The economy of Japan is exactly the same size today as it was in 1992. Wait a second. Doesn't it doesn't look like it worked to me. It, it certainly doesn't, does it? And, 
And then, and then how do they get out of this? That's the other question. They've done it for 21 years. There's got to be a reason they're doing it. I mean, they wouldn't be so idiotic just to keep doing the same thing over and over again and hoping it's going to work, would they? No, they are do- that's exactly what they're doing. It hasn't worked, and right. they keep doing it. Now, also, we have to remember that there is a new sheriff in town in, in Japan, and the new prime minister, Shinzo Abe is his name, he ran on a platform of we are going to do aggressive monetary, monetary uh, uh, stimulus. We're going to be doing aggressive fiscal stimulus. So basically what that boils down to is they've been pressing the same button for 20 years, and then Shinzo Abe runs on the platform of now we're going to press the button twice as hard, and maybe it'll work. So since that has happened, the yen has fallen off versus the the U.S. dollar versus gold versus the euro because they're printing more of it. Their plan is to double the monetary supply of yen in two years. This is an experiment never been done. Why? Because they have to. There's nobody left to buy their debt, so they have to buy it themselves. How do they get out of it? They don't is basically the answer. So I think the chance of them paying back I mean, think about that. If, if from an individual's perspective, if my total debt that I had was 250 percent of the income that I took in, what's the likelihood that I'm going to pay that off? Now, when we start looking into the data of half of their income that comes in from tax revenue goes to just interest. How in the world do I ever pay back the principal if half of all the in, if the revenue I've got coming in goes to just interest on their debt? And the, the mathematics to this is number one indisputable right. and the mathematics is even it's it's almost amusing because yep. it's so far out of line and the chance of them paying the bet this debt back in my opinion is zero and it, it, it's interesting Trey, because you know you said this, this is going to sound eerily you know similar to something we're getting close to a third of our income paying just the interest on our debt we're not too far from that in the united states I'm, I'm from Texas, so everything's a football euphemism. You'll have right. to excuse me. But, yes, we have the Japanese playbook, and we are following it letter by letter. There are minor differences. Number one, they have a significantly worse population dynamic than we do because our immigration, our policies on immigration are a little bit better. You grow GDP by two ways, an increase in productivity or an increase in population. That's it. There's no magical, there's no any other way to grow GDP. Well, their population peaked three years ago. The Japanese have no immigration. They do not have an expanding population. And they have the longest life expectancy of anybody in the modern world. The average life expectancy in Japan is 81.2 years. So what that tells you is, is that you don't have new people coming into the workforce and you have more and more people going into retirement, which means that the Social Security expense for Japan is going to continue to trend higher. It's October 17th, 2013. The reason I give you that date is that when I ask you this question, we have to say that as of right now, there's no guarantees of any of this is going to happen. We have to give all the disclaimers, uh, you know, based on you know what we're talking about right now. But let's play this out. Let's play out what a trade would look like and how people could potentially make money. And I'm saying potentially. So as of right now, we see the uh, 10-year note in Japan at 0.64. Is that about right? That is correct. The yield on the it's actually a touch lower than that after last night. Bonds rallied a little bit more, but the yield on a 10-year bond in Japan is 0.64%. Who in the world is lending the Japanese government money at 0.64% considering I've laid out the position that I think that they're an absolutely horrible credit risk? Number one, they're buying the bonds themselves, which we can naturally forecast that the yen has to work its way lower in the long term because they're going to keep printing more of it. That's right. The only problem with that scenario is, is that if I'm a bondholder and I know that you're devaluing the yen on me, I'm not going to be willing to hold that bond to all the way to 10 years out. Which So the, the faster and the weaker the yen gets, the more pressure it comes on their bonds. So my thesis is very, very simple. I think that the best value – and by the way, I've done a variety of ways of shorting this bond market. And finally, once I came up – to be honest, the first two I, I ended up not liking at all. I had to realize, listen, the risk of this trade in my mind is time. You have to manage the time. I'm not uh, – there's no way – that, that I can possibly time. This is the lar- largest accumulation of government debt in peacetime history. How am I going to predict the top of that market? I, I'm, right. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying that the quantitative elements are there. And when you get a shift of the market participants, where the market participants, the, the, the people who own these bonds, they know that they're a problem. 
There's even a sort of a, a sense of defeatism among Japanese citizens who own these things. They're like, well, eventually they're going to roll over. But until they do, I'm going to hold on to them. Now, I bring that up because we need to look back at the beginning of April. At the beginning of April, when the Bank of Japan said, listen, we're going to double the money supply. We're going to do it by buying bonds. If any government said that they were going to buy an unlimited amount of anything, I'm a commodity trader, so let's say they're going to buy an unlimited amount of wheat or soybeans or corn or whatever. You would imagine that the value of that would go up, right? That's right. What did Japanese government bonds do when, J when the Bank of Japan made the announcement that they're going to buy an unlimited amount of them and double the money supply? The bonds actually went down. Whoops. Wait a second. That is the market participant saying, mm -mm, I, I don't know what you plan on doing to the yen, but I'm not going to stick around for 10 years and own this bond and, and wait and see how bad you can destroy it. So I think that the value is in the options. If we buy options, then our loss is limited to what we spend in the options. Gotcha. They have exchange-traded options that trade in Tokyo and in Singapore. They trade at night, so they're, uh, they're tough for me to trade, but that's my problem because I'm the money manager. That's right. So I, I like the options market to start because that way we're not trying to time anything, and then we just roll our option position. And my job in this trade is to minimize our loss as much as I possibly can until you get that trigger. And once this market turns down, there isn't, you know, some people say, well, you know, Japan's the thir third largest economy in the world. Surely somebody would come to their rescue. Do you realize the numbers here that the Japanese government bond market is large as the U.S. economy? So who can write a check for that? No one can. So when, that, when those market participants start to sell, there isn't a magical IMF, you know, European Central Bank, there's nobody that can write this check to stop the bleeding. So I think a restructuring is coming. For, for, for an investment, let's just get to the numbers because everyone who's watching this right now want to know, what can I possibly make on this? If interest rates go from 0.63, wherever they are right now, they tick up to 2% because that could very well happen very quickly. A $30,000 investment right now, if that happened as of October 17th, what would that be worth if rates went to 2.5? We're going to deal in hypotheticals right now because of where yeah, the options are currently trading. So let's just let's just do the math. All right, you can you can buy options right now that are trading for a hundred dollars of actually they're two hundred dollars a piece. Okay. You can buy five of these options that don't expire until the end of November. Okay, so we we buy five of these options. We spend a thousand dollars on these options to last basically a month and a half. Okay. Yep. Those those options get triggered if rates go above one point one four percent on the ten year. Then every percentage point, every full, it's 100 basis points if we're talking bonds. So if yields go from 1.14 to 2.14, every 100 basis points is $400,000 in profit on those options. These options are so ridiculously priced, it's not even funny. And we're going to talk about why they're ridiculously priced in a minute. But that's, that's just the math. If you buy these options and bonds go, the bond futures go down a certain amount, that the math is that that's how it works. All right, so now, we have to tweak it a little bit because right. we have to presume that the yen is going to be dropping at the same time. Okay, but 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 just to make it really easy for people watching, a thousand dollars if it rises fifty basis points is worth four hundred thousand. No, no, no. If they, I get I get triggered if it moves fifty basis points, then my options go what's called in the money. Yes. So once rates go above one point one four, those options get triggered. Now they're in the money. And, and then if rates move from 1.14 to 2.14, those options are worth 400000 bucks. And this is a trade that if, if put on, we look at it for lasting, what, five years? And, and the downside is, look, this is not where you put a lot of money if someone's doing it. This is where they put some money where it is, you know what, I'm going to take a very small percentage of my net worth, very small percentage, put it in here because if it works, it's more money that I can make anywhere else ever in my life. There's another consideration for this too, Ed, What's is that? I was sitting with my dad. I'm originally from Texas. My parents lived down in Houston. We were down in the Galveston area. Right. And I was explaining this to my dad. I was explaining the position, explaining what I'm doing and why and that sort of thing. And he kind of pushes back from the picnic table. Sorry, my earpiece fell out. He pushes back from the picnic table and he says, Trey, why wouldn't I put this trade on and hope that you are wrong? Because if I'm right, when when the Greece when Greece went through its restructuring two summers ago, the, the U.S. stock market was under some pretty nasty pressure. Europe was in trouble. You know, granted the ECB came to save the day, but when Greece had its restructuring, our S and P really came under pressure. Right. Greece has the same GDP as the state of Indiana. Greece does not matter. 
Japan has the third largest economy in the world. I can assure you that if Greece has a restructuring and if Greece's bond market comes under pressure, it will absolutely adversely affect the global economy and the U.S. stock market. So I view this as an extremely levered hedge position. And like I said, I've got clients who are in the positions now and they hope that I'm wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we all do. But can I honestly tell you, when I got my money, when I have my money in it, I hope you are right as can be, okay? But, but the point is, is that for anyone watching right now, the key to this thing is knowing that there is a likelihood that whatever you put in here will go to zero, okay? There is that chance. But if you believe the world economy is in such disarray, and if you believe 250% of your GDP on its way to 300% of your GDP in Japan means that interest rates might start to rise and people won't loan them money, because of that, rates will rise, if you believe that, this has a chance of working, and it's probably a place to put some money. I, that, that's the way I look at it, Trey. Indeed. It's a, it's a hedge. And listen, this cannot last forever. I know that there's some theories that the MMT people will sit out and they'll tell you, the modern monetary theorists, they'll tell you, oh, you know, as long as they can print their own currency, this will last forever. I disagree. And the, the scariest thing if there's one piece of data that I can throw at you or one piece of, of information about this trade that should make people just drop – if they're watching this on the, on the handheld device, right. they should drop the device and hopefully don't have a wreck on the highway when I tell it to them. Why can I put on this position? Who, who's on the other side of these options that I can buy something that is so ridiculously levered that if the market has a small move, these options just explode in value? Who, who's selling me that? Here's what's scary. The banks in Japan, by Japanese law, have to hold a certain percentage of their capital in Japanese government bonds. So you know what they're doing to, to increase their yield? I mean, they're, they're on a 10-year bond that yields 0.64. That's Why right. is that a great investment? So what they're doing to enhance that yield is they are selling me these insurance policies. That's what an option is. They're selling me these insurance policies down below the market. Now, hold on a second. That means that if the bond market starts down, the asset that they own is dropping in value, and they're short this insurance that is now exploding underneath them that I own, that they're having to pay off those insurance policies. Does this story sound familiar? That's what AIG did. That's right. AIG had to run to the government for money. Why? Because they were long mortgages, and they were short credit default swaps on those mortgages down below. So when the mortgages started going down, the credit default swaps started triggering. And next thing you know, AIG is essentially bankrupt before the U.S. government comes along. How much bigger is this trade than AIG as we finish up here? It is my opinion that this will make the AIG Lehman Brothers 2008 look like a picnic when this happens. And the Japanese are doing things right now that when this trade trips, when this trade trips and this starts going and people look back, everybody's going to go, wow, wow, this is the most obvious thing ever. The, 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 if you look at the, that, the number that we talked about before. Japan right now is spending half of their tax revenue on interest. That's not sustainable. Right now, the Japanese budget, they borrow half of it every year. There is no intent to ever pay off principal here. They're just worried about paying off interest. Sure. If bonds go down, interest rates go up, their borrowing costs go up, and this just explodes against them. And basically, what we're talking about this is that this trade is spring-loaded. Once it moves against them, there's no getting out of it. And then now the bonds drop and there's nobody there to buy it. And it could get very, very ugly in Japan very, very quickly once those bonds start working lower. Trey, this has been fantastic. Let's, uh, let's end it at this, but promise me this. About every couple of weeks, we're going to do another one of these and send them out as well because I want people to be updated. Nothing, there's a chance nothing will happen for a long time. But when it does, it would be nice to have some money in this. So thank you very much. You bet. Thanks for having me.